Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of The Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. My name's Chris Coney, I am the host of The Cryptoverse and also the founder of CryptoVersity.com, which is the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. You can find out more about Cryptoversity at CryptoVersity.com. Let's take a look at the markets today. Uh, let's have a look what we've got off the top of my head. The biggest gainer in the top 10 is Steam again. Uh, this is the highest market cap Steam has ever reached from my memory anyway. It's $383 million. Now, if you think about it, I often use this analogy and I, I repeat this because some of my listeners may be new listeners and um, not have heard me say this before. So. If you imagine every cryptocurrency is a company that's providing a service of some kind, then Bitcoin is a company providing a payment service. Ethereum is a company providing a supercomputer for rent. And Steam is a social network. That's the service it provides. And it's the service it provides that gives the token its value. That's how a Bitcoin is worth anything, or an Ether token, or a Steam token. The value is derived from how useful the platform is, okay? So why does that matter? Well, because if Steam is a new social network, it's only three or four months old. And if it were a company that was three or four months old, that means it's gone from the company being worth zero to being worth $383 million in four months. Now, if we looked at Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, any of those social media platforms, and looked at what their market cap was after three or four months, it would have been zero or negative meaning they would have been in debt with no business model, no, nothing of the sort, right? And not even any stock, probably. They just have a seed capital and that would be at the end of it. Whereas um, the beauty about a, a cryptocurrency or a decentralized autonomous company is that you can start buying stock in it almost immediately on launch. As soon as an exchange starts allowing people to trade the token for that particular network, boom, you can be a shareholder. And you can buy Steam right now on a number of different exchanges. Let's see what else is going on here. Uh, Ethereum and the DAO are still climbing back up because of the hard fork, which is giving people confidence, I imagine. Scenarios dipped 12%, BitShares up 10, EmmaCoin up 10, and that's about it for the top 20. Now, moving on to the Bitcoin price chart. Bitcoin sitting at $670, nice and calm in the markets. Not so much of a huge of price movement on a day-to-day -day basis, so I'm happy about that. And the article I've chosen today is this. Turkish residents flock to Bitcoin during military coup. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, over the weekend, the uh, a portion of the military tried to overthrow the Turkish, Turkish government. So let's see what the article says. The Turkish government is, is currently rounding up members of the groups that launched a military coup in recent days. During the coup, citizens ran to their banks and local ATMs to get their wealth out of the system as Turkey's currency dropped significantly in value. You see, that's the thing. When you're trading stocks, you're trading the value of a company. And when you're trading currencies, you are trading countries and economies. That's the key difference, right? So if there's a turmoil in Turkey, of course, that uh, gives people economic uncertainty and they will sell Turkish currency and get a more stable currency like the pound, the dollar, the euro, or the most, I would argue, the most stable currency of all, which would be Bitcoin. Now, I don't mean stable in terms of price. It's plenty, vol plenty volatile, um, but it's um, it's got the, the least chance of collapsing, put it that way. So Bitcoin supporters tell the Turkish citizens to turn to cryptocurrency. As usual, many Bitcoiners believe residents living in Turkey should look to Bitcoin to preserve their wealth. The Turkish Lira's value has suffered as the military coup stared fear throughout the country. With the civil unrest unfolding, media publications such as Seeking Alpha are reporting about Bitcoin being used as a financial safe haven. Seeking Alpha reporter Scott Tzu states, quote, 10 years ago, this article would have been about gold. Today, the conversation turns to Bitcoin and why we have a small allocation towards the digital currency. Close quote. When the military coup started on the 14th of June, which was actually last Thursday, 
Reports and photos of bank runs and long ATM lines surfaced on the internet. The banks in Turkey tried to quell the financial fiasco by offering unlimited liquidity, and the Turkish Prime Minister told the world that macroeconomic fundamentals remain solid. Yeah, right. Officials from the region wanted to reassure investors the coup would not cause turbulence within the country's economy. <laughs> oh God, uh, sorry, that's just hilarious to me. However, the various reports and images confirm that the coup has indeed affected the Turkish economy, which is why I laughed. That whole notion is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, anyway, oftentimes when economies fail, such as in Greece, Venezuela, and the recent Brexit, huh? Is our economy failing? That's weird. It says, oftentimes when economies fail, such as Greece, you could argue their economy has failed. Venezuela, you could argue that their economy has failed. And the recent Brexit, uh, does that mean the British economy has failed? Well, the answer is no, but I think what they're, what they're getting at is after the Brexit vote was announced, the pound did drop quite a bit. But that was only because of speculation. It was nothing to do with the fundamentals of the British economy. And uh, neither do we have a military coup, so... Anyway, it seems that Turkish uh, residents got the message, as Brave New Coins Bitcoin index has shown a significant spike in Bitcoin against Turkish lira markets. With the coup now over and rebel forces tracked down, maybe Turkish citizens will look to the cryptocurrency to hedge against chaos, chaos caused by future conflicts. Yeah, because once you know that uh, there's a significant amount of dissatisfaction in the country, then just because the military coup is, has been uh, stopped for now, well, doesn't mean it isn't going to flare up again. So, you know, that would give you a sign that it's time to uh, move your wealth somewhere safe. Um, and there's a little graph in set here that shows the drop in, what's this, US dollar pair? Oh yeah, it's showing the drop in Turkish lira, which dropped quite a bit in that period of time. It says there are many advantages to a universal currency like Bitcoin. One example is if your country happens to have a coup and your currency does this, and it falls down, right? Bitcoin users are not affected by military coups, bank failures, or government intervention. The cryptocurrency has been fully functional since its inception and has never seen market, market blackouts. Bitcoin is truly peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, and open source for the entire globe to share. Without a doubt, Bitcoin is one of the best forms of money. The Bitcoin network has been functional for 99.989914184% of the time since its inception on the 3rd of January 2009 at 2.54 a.m. GMT. That is true. So because Bitcoin is global, right, if one country has a hissy fit or has a military coup, again, it's like that's 1% of people using Bitcoin is having problems, but it doesn't really show up on the radar because the other 99% the other is perfectly stable. So things carry on as normal. And you know um, that the actual problems have got nothing to do with the turbulence in the country. The difference with a fiat currency is that the currency has everything to do with the turbulence in the country because it's issued by the government and it's the military that are trying to overthrow the government. So there's a direct link between the currency and the government that's trying to be overthrown, right? So if that's not a display of a lack of confidence in the in the government and thereby the currency, I don't know what is. So there's a tweet embedded in the article from the 15th of July, which was five days ago. And it says, Turkish citizens withdrawing their fiat to buy Bitcoin where they know there's where their money is safe. Hashtag Bitcoin is safe. Well, wait a minute. What I want to know is who's on the other side of that transaction? Who's selling the Bitcoin and receiving the um, the Turkish lira? Because when when you do an exchange like that, if I if I have Turkish lira and you have um, Bitcoin, oh no, the other way around, I have the Bitcoin and you have the Turkish lira, and you want to get rid of your Turkish lira because you think that it's not stable. And then you'd prefer to have the Bitcoin. So I give you the Bitcoin, you give me the Turkish Lira, right? That's the exchange. What that means, though, that 
I must want the Turkish Lira more than the Bitcoin. What is that about? All right? Unless it's unless it's excess, it must be excess supply of Bitcoin that that person had because there's, there is no way if <laughs> there's no way if I had um a bit, my Bitcoin for example, I wouldn't have sold it to uh, anyone in Turkey and and then had them pay me in Turkish Lira. Hell no. Anyway, it, you know, that's that's not an absolute rule though because if you've got excess Bitcoin like if you're a miner or whatever and you've got it sitting there, um you could sell it for quite a high price, accept a lot of Turkish lira, and then buy something with that Turkish lira from Turkey. You know. Anyway, spreading information about Bitcoin's uh, virtues as a monetary safe haven, free from the typical controls that governments place on wealth, will most likely continue with increasingly bleak outlooks on growth in the mainstream economy. Many governments are failing to, failing, to the wayside. I think that should say many governments are falling by the wayside due to financial difficulties and nation states in general are becoming irrelevant. Yes. And then there's a graph that shows local Bitcoin's weekly volume in Turkish Lira, according to Coindance. And there's a massive spike um, at the end of last week. What do you think about countries with failing economies turning to Bitcoin? Let us know in the comments below. Well, it depends what you mean by countries, right? Um, with failing economies, well, you know they're they're all very broad terms. It's not the country that would turn to Bitcoin; it's the people of the country, which you could argue is the country, right? Um, anyone can do that at any time. Countries without failing economies can turn to Bitcoin, right? Because it's you don't have to have a crisis to trade up to a superior currency. You know, it's probably better to do it when there isn't a crisis, right? Oh, we've got some comments on this article. John says, I hear people saying, so what happens when the government shuts down the internet? <laughs> okay, but that's only ever a temporary thing unless your country is North Korea. Internet comes back before too long and so does Bitcoin. And then someone else has replied to that saying, if you're concerned with that, you can keep an offline private, an offline private in the hands of or out of a friend or relative. I think they're talking about like a cold storage wallet or something. You can also simply set up a mnemonic with a passcode with an out of area trusted person and yeah, blah, 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 yeah. And that said, if your internet is gone completely, it's probably a pretty damn good sign it's time to hightail your ass out of the country before the wall goes up and you're stuck for 50 years. In which case, Bitcoin would be a fantastic option as soon as you have fled the, the oppression. Yes. Oh, right. So what happens when the government shuts down the internet? I assume they're talking about in Turkey, right? Um, I guess they could do that within a country. Um, the only way to take down the entire internet would be to have every country block the internet simultaneously all over the world, right? And that would that would pretty much nuke Bitcoin if you could do that. If you could get if you could get if you could take the internet offline worldwide somehow, then that definitely would shut down Bitcoin because kind of needs the internet to uh, function. So very interesting indeed. So that's going to do it for today's edition of the Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. I'd like to thank you for listening today. You can go to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast. You can scroll down to the bottom and support the Cryptoverse with a Bitcoin donation using the address on the bottom of that page. Or you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or you can check out the Cryptoverse on Steemit. And if you check it out on Steemit, you can support the Cryptoverse financially without actually spending any money. Remember to check out the main site, Cryptoversity.com, which is the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains. That's all for today, guys. So I will see you in the next episode. Until then, it's bye for now.